If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, MonthlyVRX.com might be a good option for you. Our quote of the day comes from Elizabeth. Please don't call me Liz Taylor. How appropriate. There were a lot of quotes attributed to Elizabeth Taylor. And I could have chosen quite a few. But this one, it's Women's History Month. I've only slept with men I've been married to. How many women can make that claim? Says Elizabeth Taylor. Eight husbands in her marriage career. I mean, that that is a career for some people. Eight husbands. Can you imagine that? That's almost like evil can evil. I dare you. Okay, I will. I've only slept with men I've been married to. How many women can make that claim? I wonder if she slept with them before she married them. Hmm. 508-996-0500. That is how you get on the program today. There is a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. If you'd like to get involved with the program, 508-996-0500. Coming up in just a bit, Jim is going to tell us what's coming up tomorrow on Town Square Sunday. And, of course, we've got the Bitcoin biz barometer coming your way. Oh, let let me get this over with now. You did not win the big... Mega millions last night. It's expected on Tuesday to be up over over a billion dollars. Man, can you imagine that? Now, at the same time, we have the NCAA basketball tournament going on. Men's bracket and the women's bracket. Which do you think is easier to pick. All of the, I'm just using the men's bracket. Uh, Sorry, women. I, I don't know what it is for the women's bracket, but for the men's bracket, to pick all of them successfully, including the winner. Are the odds better to do the NCAA bracket or to hit mega millions? If you said it's easier to hit mega millions than to pick the NCAA men's basketball bracket, you are correct. You have a 1 in 302.6 million chance at winning mega millions. You have a 1 in 9.2 quadrillion chance of picking the bracket the whole way through the entire bracket and you here's something else you're better off going for the mega millions not only because it's easier to win it but there's a whole lot more money in it if you hit that puppy 1.2 billion dollars on tuesday night If you take a lump sum, it's $467 million. That's nothing to sneeze at. But I got to tell you, you know, it seems like a ripoff. If I take it over 20 years, you're going to give me $1.2 billion before taxes. If I take a lump sum, you're going to give me $467 million before taxes. And you know those taxes are going to be pretty darn heavy too. All right. uh, Before I get into 
this um, interesting conversation piece that I talked about earlier. I want to go back over something that happened last evening or yesterday afternoon when I was on with Barry. He was talking about Coastline Elderly Services and the Meals on Wheels program. And he's ticked off, and and I would have to say rightly so, about the fact that the politicians were doing a photo op, you know, handing the meals out to, to other folks. And then come to find out that some of the meals don't seem to be too healthy. I asked the question. I thought it was a pretty appropriate question. Maybe and maybe you don't. But the question I asked Barry was, did the politicians take a look at the meals before they handed them out? I mean, think about it. When you're at a restaurant, most of the time the server looks over your meal to make sure it was the way that you ordered it. Now I know this is Meals on Wheels and it, it might not be something that you ordered But still, you would think that they would look to make sure, you know, I don't know, sometimes people have food allergies, something, just to take a look. And if it doesn't look right, maybe you don't serve it. All right, that's my thought process. Other folks might think, you know what, this is Meals on Wheels. You should be happy to get something. Be happy that they're serving you some food. I mean, there, there, there is that school of thought. And then one more way of looking at it, and, and certainly uh, something that, that Barry brought up, you know, we're still giving out $64 to migrants, and yet this is how we treat people that are recluse or, or shut in and how we treat veterans. Again, a perfect point, considering how much money the state and what what was that figure I said before? Uh, About seventy five million dollars a month. Now, that money is also going or that funding is also going for folks that do live in state. But I would like to know what the breakdown is. How many people have been in Massachusetts for Six or more months, I would I would like to say a year or longer and receiving that benefit compared to those that are outside of the country coming in and getting a part of that benefit. Beacon Hill lawmakers, they're still talking about how to how to make this shelter program work. I don't hear Beacon Hill lawmakers talking about stopping the program. And I don't know that I ever will, but. Uh, I, to come back to this Meals on Wheels, I'm not trying to say stop the program. I'm trying to say, well, we're complaining about what those meals are. We don't know if the people that are delivering those meals are even taking a look at the meals that are being delivered. I'm not arguing whether the meal is something good or something bad. But heck... At least look at it. How do you know that there's not an ant running around in the food? I mean, I've said, I think many of us have been to a restaurant before, and I don't, I don't think anybody planted, but I've seen a moth in lettuce. How do you know? I mean, these politicians, of course, they're going to go do the photo op. If you want to blame somebody, blame the newspaper for being there, snapping the picture at the photo op. 508-996-0500. I've been going and going about this. Let's hear from you. Hello. Oh, wrong one there. Hello. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Brian is. Are you on or are you off the air? I hope I'm on the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> am I on or am I off? <laughs> am I live or am I Memorex? It, it just came up quickly. You, you just popped like right up. The, the, there was no commercial break or anything. So I said, oh, it's... So, I air. had one line and it went dead, and I just went to the second one because there's even a third one blinking. Oh, okay, all right. Um, first what, of what all, what say you? Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning. I, I'm 
I'm just wondering, you know, I, I had an observation like last night. As I, I don't know if you've been talking about it. As I've been on the road. But um, this whole thing about Russia that happened last night, I guess it's a terrorist bombing? attack. ISIS making claims yeah, for it. Yeah. I, I guess ISIS is claiming responsibility for it. Now, was it a bombing or a mass shooting or both? Because I know there was a fire after and everything. So I, I know think. about the fire. I haven't heard anything about a bombing, but I know that there was a shooting. Shooting, right? Like, is it up to 40 or 60 dead or 60 something like is that? what ABC just reported. Okay, six. Okay. What, what astonishes me about the whole thing, how I heard that a, 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 a CIA alerted Russia that they, that they got some information that there'll be an attack on them any time now. And the first thing that came to my mind, I thought Russia was our primary enemy. Isn't the enemy of our enemy our friend? <laughs> Why well, is ISIS supposed to be our friend too? No, no, <laughs> it's not supposed to be our friend. But right. I'm trying to wrap myself around this. We hear how Russia is so evil. How we must stop Russia. Now we get information that might hinder Russia, and we try to help them out. I I'm think I, you know. Out, let, let, me, let, me, let me let me let me try it like this. I believe that the United States would want Russia to to do the same if they had information about somebody trying to to do a sneak attack on 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 civilians. Okay, so so basically like you and I always talk about it. We're not really at war. This is about making money. Always. Because oh, always. But it's it's the hypocrisy is sickening. We've come to the point we have an administration right now is cooperating against its own people, basically conspiring, is conspiracy against its own American population, what's happening in the border. But they want us to send millions and millions and millions of dollars to foreign countries to defend their border. I just heard this week that supposedly we're sending troops to Thailand and to China to protect, on the Thailand, to protect their border. This is, uh, you know... Uh, protect it's, whose border? I guess we're sending troops to Thailand and to Asia. I, I, I guess to, it's to protect them against the Chinese. Really? I didn't, yeah, know, I heard, I didn't know the Chinese were looking to invade no, no, Thailand. But, yeah, exactly. So why are they sending troops over there to that part of the world? I don't again? know. But, yeah, exactly. But it goes to show you, how can anybody, seeing what we saw again this week again, they bum-rushed the um, border fence there in El Paso, and, and then local national guard not our federal government that's supposed to protect our borders our local guard in texas who's fighting against their own government to protect them from basically an invasion and and as you saw the footage did you see those thousands of women and children bum rushing the border no no it was all men military age you know this is sickening to the core. It's, it's disgusting what's happening. Back, um, back, I'm sorry. Brian, I'm looking at this. I'm saying, what are we doing here? And how can we convince the next generation? I personally, and I, I, I had that conversation, no way in hell would any child of mine be in the military. Why? We're paying mercenaries for other countries? That's basically like what we are. We're not defending our own borders. We're not defending our own sovereignty. We're not defending our own interests. So we're basically a mercenary army that's paid for hire. That, that, that's all this army is. So we're going to send our, our men, our sons and daughters to defend other countries, other interests, other corporations while our country is bleeding out? I hear you. And, you know, I, I, the last one that you mentioned, I think, is probably the largest other corporations. Going to let you go with that, but I appreciate Thank the you. call. 508-996-0500 is how you get on to the program today. Let us, uh, let's take one more before we go in, into our break. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Brian. I just woke up, but could you give me the Mega Millions? Number? I don't know the I numbers. Tickets. Don't know the numbers. Can you, can you get them? I don't know how to get them. You don't. <laughs> no. Well, listen. Get out of bed and go over to the. No, I'm <laughs> go too over tired. to the store. Everything's killing me. Listen, What's wrong? With, um, what do you mean everything's killing you? I got all kind of problems. Please, arthritis, oh. the back. I need the fusion. My hernia. I got to go in and get some of these surgeries done. I got to get the hernia done. Oh God, it's oh. killing me. Oh, I don't like.
like to hear that. So well, what I else is on your to, on your brain? In, well, I got to go to Boston for it. I don't want just anybody touching my doing that. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I got a lot of scar tissue, and I need a. I don't even want a mesh, but I'm gonna have to get a mesh. I guess that's how they fix them. Well, uh, you know, so, I, I, I guess Boston surgeons earlier this week they transplanted a a pig kidney into a human. Really? I thought it was a heart. No. Kidney? Kidney. Oh, good. I don't, I, I guess. They I mean, say pigs are closest to humans as any animal. <laughs> I, look, uh, I've heard that. I, I just, you know, I look at a pig and I, and I think, <laughs> I, I, I know guys are called pigs, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Uh-uh. <laughs> what, what hospital did they do that in? I want to say it was Mass General, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, they do some wonderful work up there. Different work, anyway. Hey, so, Brian, yes. um, if I make a comment on the Meals on the Wheels, yeah, that's I wouldn't get it myself, to be honest with you. To me, I wouldn't serve it to... I'd be ashamed to serve that to somebody. Well, you would have to know what you're serving, and... and I, I, I don't know if they're good or bad. I'm not trying to, I I don't know. I've never seen a Meals on Wheel. I've seen the people delivering, but I've never seen what it looks like inside. So I, well, I, I really can't comment, but. It's, you wouldn't want it. It's like a little sandwich that's nasty and, uh, I don't know. They ought to revise that program. Well, how do you, how do you go about doing that? How would you do it if you could? The mayor's involved in that, isn't he? I don't know that he's involved. He may have delivered one, but I don't think... I think it's a federal program. I know it's a federal program. So oh, when, it, when, it, when, it comes, when it comes into New Bedford, I'm not sure exactly how, how it comes in, but it's, it's funded by the feds. Somebody needs to step up and make it better. The food better, if you know what I'm saying. They should just maybe give what they give the school kids. I don't know. I don't know. Did, I'm not, did I'm you not ever? Did it. you ever like school food? There's some things, not really. I my, my mother used to make us sandwiches, and um, I I don't know if I ever ate the hot meal. Mm. Anyway, so listen, um, I um, I need to know these numbers. Maybe somebody can call in on it. We'll see Last what we can do for you. Last time I won $12. That's the most I ever won. <laughs> That's more than I've ever won. But I am going to buy some more tickets. Every time it gets big, I spend about $40, $50 on it. Do you think it might be better when it's not big if you spend money on it? I don't know. No, I'm asking. I don't know, but I, I just spend money on it when it gets real big. But I'll be I'll buy more. Yesterday I spent 20 The, the time before I only spent 6 but if it doesn't pop up, pop off this time, you know that's another twenty twenty. So that's that's how it gets big. I don't know. I don't know why it keeps going up to a billion though. That's a little weird. Well, because nobody's winning in it, and folks go out and they buy more tickets because they want to win the the American dream isn't whatever the American dream is supposed to be, and so people go out and they try to win the lottery. Look what you're doing. You're trying to win it. Yeah, because I got a dream. Well, there you go. The only way I'm going to get my dream fulfilled is if I have enough money to do it. Well, and that's why you're doing the lottery, because you might not be able to make it either working or on whatever kind of income that you have coming in. But I would help a lot of people if I did win big money. Because, that's what everybody says. Well, I would. because I'm not saying you wouldn't. To do. I just don't know. A couple of questions before I let you go. Yeah. All right. Here's the first one. Our quote of the day, the Brian's B quote of the day. I've only slept with men I've been married to. How many women can make that claim? That's from Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, brother. <laughs> no, it doesn't How say do anything like- about sleeping with her brother. Uh, How do you like that one? Well, Look, I, I guess I can believe her. She doesn't say if she slept with them before and or after. 
I mean, she's been married eight times. I mean, that's well, a, I don't know. I don't is that know a lot or not a that lot? That Hollywood. I don't know about that Hollywood. Hollywood, let London. Me say, let, me, let me give you. Let me give you my quote. Each moment of the year has its own beauty. Ralph Waldo Emerson. There you go. Uh, last one for you. There is a guy who's running for the state senate. He is currently a state rep from the Cape. He has filed bills that would fine you for not voting. What do you think of that? That's a good one. You you think people should be fined if they don't go to vote? Yes. Really? Yeah, but then it takes away your um your um what's that? The democracy, your right, your freedom to choose. Well, it does take that away. Okay. Well, I I believe in voting. Okay, believing in voting is one thing, but forcing folks to vote uh, by by fining them if they don't. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. Lady Bird Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you very Tell me much. the numbers, Brian, please. Oh, uh, uh, I got to go. Okay. Thank Thanks you. for the call. 508 996 I hear you, Jim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jim Phillips with our Town Square Sunday preview. Hello, Jim. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Here's what's happening this week on Town Square Sunday. A reenactment of the Stations of the Cross and the Death of Jesus Christ will be held on Good Friday at Brooklawn Park in New Bedford. Sister Mary of the Transfiguration will join us this week to talk about the event and its importance to Christians around the world and here in New Bedford. Also, Ian Abreu will tell us about the Northeast Home and Garden Show. The show will feature more than 50 vendors and many special displays, demonstrations, and prizes. It's happening April 27th and 28th at the Longplex Sports Center in Tiverton, Rhode Island. I'm Jim Phillips. Join us for Town Square Sunday, Sunday morning at 6 and 11 on 1420 WBSM and 99.5 FM. Thank you very much, Jim. Let's see. The Bitcoin Business Barometer, where we measure the universal crypto marketplace. Hmm, Bitcoin. I, I'm watching and I'm watching and I'm watching. It's had a couple of downs, but it's up over $2,100 from last Saturday at this time. $64,166 for Bitcoin. Ethereum is down almost 600 at 3000 342 Binance coin up 64 coming in this morning at $512 Solana at 174 that's $26 higher than last Saturday at this time XRP is down a penny at 61 cents Dogecoin up 2 cents at 16 cents and Cardano Cardano down 12 cents, coming in at 62 cents this morning. That's your Bitcoin Biz Barometer for today, March 23rd, 2024. As always, I get the numbers from CoinMarketCap.com because these number, the numbers I just gave you, they've all changed since I took them down because CoinMarketCap.com changes the numbers as warranted every second of every day in this year 366 days all right let's get back to your calls 508 996 thank you hello good morning brian gilly oh. Safio. hey gilly how you doing winging my wang <laughs> is it possible to talk about monday night Talk about Monday night. Was there a basketball game Monday night? No, no, the city council meeting. What happened Monday night at the city council meeting? You have you seen the video and anything? Have you seen anything? Oh, no, I don't want to be jumping all around. Did you, did you see the video with Linda Morat? I didn't see the video with Linda Morat. I did hear a couple of syllables about what Linda Morat said at the meeting. What would you like to say about it? 
Well, my first thing is, uh, you know, they, they have police officers there, right? They, all the subcommittee meetings and everything, mm-hmm. they guarantee, mm-hmm. they guarantee four mm-hmm. hours. And the purpose are there to keep law and order for both sides. So uh, they say, yes. Well, I mean, um, I had left uh, Chambers, and when I came back, she decided to stand up instead of calling the officer. And uh, just let me let you know that she's not, she's only a city councilor right now. She doesn't have She's no, not the president anymore, correct. Right. So she can't be dictating what people do. She gets up and start, she tried to stop me to, uh, from walking back to where I was standing. And she spread her arms out and everything. Like and she was flying? Was, no, 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 no. Like, far, because by her desk and where the podium is, that's where I was going to come down. You had, I just want to let everybody know, you had the chief of police at the podium. And... Um, she decided to play hall monitor to stop me from walking back to my seat. And there was another, there was another 10 city councilors there sitting down and the place was packed. And she decides to take things into her own hands by stopping me and says, you can't go by. So I says, listen, sit down. You don't have no, no uh, responsibilities right now. So I, I try to walk around the podium well, I did walk around the podium to go on the other side to come down. All of a sudden, she moves over there, and she sticks her hands out again, and she grabs me by my left arm, my my forearm. And, every, you know, I mean, I yelled out, hey, that's not so. Why are you grabbing me? The thing that gets me is she's trying to put up a uh, thing that she's afraid of me. I intimidate her. Um and all that stuff. But the bottom line is, if she's afraid of me and trying to make me look like a bad guy, why is she coming right up to me? There was other city councilors there, and nobody tried, didn't say nothing. They, they, the chief of police didn't say nothing. So how can you tell people where to walk and all that stuff? The thing that really gets me is, though, when the police officer made his police report, I went and picked it up Tuesday. Now, there was a lot of discrepancies. The way he was, the, he never even questioned me, really. You know, he, he, Was the police, police officer there or was he called in? No, he was there. He was out in the hallway. He was out in the hallway. He wasn't even there when all this started. So he didn't see what went on? No, no. He, but the chief of police did because the video, and if you look at the... He's looking straight at and there was like a couple of feet away. Okay? So the video speaks for itself. But my point is, why would a city council complain? And she's been, she's been videotaped calling me the A word. She's been on videotape sticking tongues out of people. Why would she put herself in that position? I, I, I don't know. I don't no, know. You know I, but, but, you know, Gilly... You, you yeah. have these confrontations over at City Hall all the time. I shouldn't oh, say all the time. I don't, you're right, not all the time. Frequently, okay. all right? Occasionally. Yeah, occasionally would be it. I, okay. I don't know why Linda Morad and, and sometimes Brian, uh, they, they get at it with you. But one thing's for sure. Was was it necessary to to walk down there? Everybody else walks that way. So Everybody why else? so so why were you stopped? I have no idea. What they said was that the the chair the chair was in Hebrew made a comment about, but I wasn't in the building when he made it. I never heard anything about no walking. He, he, by he, the but he, okay. So it, you know, it, it, I I don't I don't really want to get into the he said she said kind of things that go on over over at City Hall. Uh, there's been a lot of antics. Uh, I think Barry even uh, did a little bit of a story on it, but it 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 doesn't make the city look good. I I mean no disrespect to you. It doesn't make you look good. It it just 
it, it's a it's a stain that keeps on uh, persisting. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm I'm looking the city is trying to remake itself with this explore New Bedford. Now, imagine if somebody explored New Bedford and they went into the appointments and briefings meeting. No, Brian, I understand that. But let, well, let me say. No, 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 no. I, 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 I've gone on a long time with this. I, I, I appreciate you calling about it. But um, one word, Brian, please. Oh, Gilly, you've had plenty of words. Yes, please, Brian. Just just want to make a statement. That's all. You, you, you've, made a sta- you've made plenty of statements on this. I mean, th- th- this is something that keeps on going on and on. I'll, I'll, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Tell you in five seconds that you've got ten seconds, okay? Okay. Five, four, okay. three, <laughs> two. Go ahead, Gilly. Okay. The thing is, okay, I'm going to the city changes. Let's say I am a complete idiot and I'm a a so okay. Now, why is Linda is a, a an elected official? Your time's up, man. Okay, I I, I, I got to go on. I've got other people. I got it's other amazing. people. I, I appreciate it, Gilly, but um, something. You, I look. Hey, we, we, we. I think we get it. You know, there's something that's going on between you and a, a couple of counselors, in particular, Linda Morad. I do appreciate the call and you informing us. Uh, but thanks, uh, thank you. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Ah oh, man, I, I think I. I'm like many others. We've heard a lot about what goes on with Gilly and uh, a couple of other people over at at City Hall. I'm I'm not going to try to choose sides. But I think whether we look at the Gilly side of the street or the Carlos side of the street or the Morad side of the street and um, the Brian Gomes side of the street. Just stop the crap. Okay? Take care of business so the people can move on and and they can have more respect for the stuff that goes on in city council chambers and with the city councilors. 508-996-0500. That's how you get on Brian's beat today. Well, I, I uh, Gilly, again, I appreciate the call. I, I hope that somehow, some way, you and and Linda Morad and uh, the city council can figure out what the heck is going on, so people have a little bit more respect for the institution. Uh, somebody asked about Mega Millions, three, eight, thirty one, thirty five, forty four, and the Mega Ball. 16. Thank you for your patience. Hello. Hey, I know I know we're uh, cutting it close on time, but I just wanted to offer up a little allegory that I was thinking of this morning. Say if a relative, say a, a uh, the patriarch of the family goes to the hospital and he calls one sibling, one of one of the kids, but not all of them. So the kids arrive at the hospital and one of them gets all butt hurt because they didn't get called first. So a big argument ensues and everybody forgets the reason why they're there at the hospital to begin with. Mm. Um, so we, we have a choice. We have a choice to to inject ourselves into an issue and make more of an issue about it. Um, and I think that's the wrong way to, to do things. I mean, what's been going on at City Hall? We don't even know. Because we're too busy hearing about Gilly's drama over there. If he just removes himself from that situation and lets City Hall do their own thing, then everybody will probably be better off. Yeah, I, I won't argue that at the same time if if the folks at City Hall will just let Gilly do his thing, um, you know, as long yeah. as he's not uh, creating a ruckus. Uh, that works too. I mean, I I I see the clash on on both sides of the street here. 